All right, kids, we are back. Lost, Found, But Never Filmed, Episode 2. David, what do you have for us this week? Um, I have a surprising script that um, I think we discussed before. I don't, I don't remember. I don't, okay, well, if we have, then it'll spark up some memories in your... And that uh, tiny little <laughs> Will Burster brain of yours. <laughs> well, you know that the show is all about nostalgia. It's all about bringing back old franchises that that were popular back in the day. You know that that that's what we're about on this show because that's what this show is. It's us bringing bringing back an old brand of ours that was popular on an old show we did. Uh, yeah, we're, we're the Force Awakens. We are the Force Awakens of our own podcast network. Uh, so that's beautiful, man. That's what we want. Uh. By the way, if you're jumping in new with us, Lost Time and Never Filmed is a show where we look at movies that never happened. The scripts that were written, they they were thrown into a drawer. David, Joshua Hernandez here, uh, our, our, our lost script aficionado, goes into these drawers. He digs out these scripts and, and he reads them to us. Well, not not literally. He, <laughs> he, he recounts them very, very vaguely. <laughs> um, the, way, the way you make it sound is, is like you're in bed and I tell you a, a bedtime story, except I read <laughs> That's, uh, yeah, that's totally how I think of it, except in reality, it's you going, um, I can't remember, I, I'm trying to, uh, oh, so so what happens is, that's how it is. And I, and I think that that's ten times more entertaining, because I get to interrupt you and make fun of you for it, so. In my defense, you didn't give me enough time to read the script on the first episode. Did I give you any actual shit for that whatsoever? Now I can't remember. No, I didn't. I was like, that's fine, man. We're good. We're all Gucci. <laughs> and, and I was more so just like, I was. we were more rolling with it, and we're going to do the same thing this time. Although, you did actually prepare this time, didn't you? Yeah. Well, I actually read the first 60 pages out of the 128 script. Damn, that's that's a hefty piece of writing. So I'm, I'm curious to find out what it is. So, so set it up for us. What's the deal? Well, speaking of nostalgia... This script is an adaptation, an, an adaptation of something that's very nostalgic. Well, at least to me, and it's the um, the first draft of the unproduced Halo movie. Oh boy! Which uh, so? What year is this? Uh, two thousand five. And so this is the Peter the Peter Jackson one. Yeah. Oh well, wow. Actually, um, kinda okay because it, here's the history behind the um, the unproduced Halo movie. The uh, Columbia Pictures had first dibs on it at first before it went to Universal and Fox, and they hired Alex Garland to write the first draft. This was before Jackson and Neil Blomkamp, the director of District 9, came on board. And for those of you that don't know, Alex Garland is the guy who wrote the um, 2012 Judge Dredd movie, the sci-fi movie Sunshine. And recently wrote and directed Ex Machina, so he knows his way around sci-fi. Oh, why didn't we get this fucking movie? <laughs> so, so, so let me, let me say this, because uh, you know David always surprises me with these things. So I always, I always feel need to just explain my, my my point of reference for it. I was never an Xbox guy. I was always a PlayStation guy. But of the Xbox franchises that I liked, Gears of War was always number one, so we should at some point do the unproduced Gears of War script, although that might be getting made now. We'll see how that goes. Uh, but number two was always Halo. Uh, I was always interested in Halo. I always played that a lot at friends' houses and stuff, and I always loved the aesthetic. It was always interesting to me. Uh, the combat was always like... Uh, I hadn't seen anything like that when I was a kid. So uh, I, was always, I was always sort of casually interested. And I've seen the... Um, have you seen the Halo, Halo 3 Forward Unto Dawn movie that was on Netflix a while ago? No, but I should have because I'm a massive Halo fan. Mm. Uh, unlike you, I was stuck with an original Xbox. Oh. All the other kids had PlayStation 2s, PlayStation 3s, Xbox 360s. I was stuck with the original Xbox. Oh, and wow. The, the games that I played the most there was um, Halo 1 and 2 and the two Godzilla games. Destroy All Monsters Melee and Save the Earth? Yeah. Oh, okay. See, I, I never owned Destroy All Monsters Melee, because that was, like, before... I did, my first game... My first major new game console was a PlayStation 2. And, uh... I guess it was a Game Boy Advance as well, but it was a PlayStation 2, and and uh, that, that's where I, I sort of started my, my little... My video game adventure, so... I, did, I, I missed out on the first Halo... And a lot of original generation Xbox and PlayStation. Like I didn't, I didn't play Resident Evil Four when that was new. I got into that later. Uh, 
So well, to be fair, you got the better end of the deal because um, I didn't get into the PlayStation brand games until I got my PlayStation Three, and it's mm-hmm. through, through the PS Three is where I got into God of War, Devil May Cry, a bunch of PlayStation exclusives, and I thought I got the wrong fucking gaming system when I was a kid because. <laughs> All I had was the first two Halo games and the two Godzilla games, and those are the only games I would play over and over again over the years. Did you have online at least? Oh hell no! Oh. <laughs> My parents could could barely afford getting a, a used uh, original Xbox. They weren't gonna oh, boy. waste their money on live. Right, right. Wow. So you just played the campaign over and over again. Yeah, and that's why I really love Halo because that makes a lot of sense, man. That's beautiful. That that's a beautiful success. That's like the Rocky of video game stories, right there. <laughs> it's like David Joshua Hernandez plays the original fucking Halo fifteen million times in a row, and he knows it like the back of his own dick. So you know he he comes in like, <laughs> like he comes into like a Halo tournament, like a bunch of people who know Halo like the back of their own dick, and they race through the campaign, and you just fail miserably. <laughs> that's that is the Rocky. Of video game stories. So, we're going to make that move with you one day. But anyway, continue. <laughs> oh, I had a point, but now I forgot. So you, so, so you had it on the original Xbox. You, you played it a lot. Um, so, you, so I imagine you must... I mean, obviously you have a lot of nostalgia for it. So I guess my question to you, oh, yeah. how faithful is the script to the original... Now, it, does it do that weird thing where some... Because some video game movies set it in the world where it's like it's not like a, an adaptation it, it's set in the world of the video game in that in that continuity and this is just another story or is it like a straight up adaptation of the first game i oh, know it's a straight up ad- adaptation of the first game mm-hmm. but normally that would be a good thing but i think that's actually its greatest flaw mm. it's too close to the video game um interesting well, here's, here's Even, like, in terms of the universe and everything? Like, everything is just the same? I mean, it takes certain liberties with um, a few elements here and there. Like, for example, they establish in this script that the Master Chief has to rely on blood transfusion in order to function, which is something they never introduced in the in the Halo games. Interesting. That's interesting, though. Why? What, what purpose? Because he's a Spartan. He's, like, a suit. He's Captain America in space with a gun. Yeah, because he's a genetically augmented uh, super soldier, so I guess in this variation, uh, he needs blood tra- transfusions in order to function. Is he a fucking vampire? Like, what the fuck? I, I, I guess, because <laughs> I don't remember that the first time fucking I Fucking Morbius read it, but, over here? But I read it today, I was like, wait, what the fuck? <laughs> that is so weird. Um, yeah. um, is it So he's the last Spartan in this version still, right? Oh yeah, they emphasize that greatly. As a matter of fact, that's how the the script begins. It begin instead of beginning with the the way the video game begins. It, it begins in that way anyway. But before the prologue, uh, we begin with um, a dream that Master Chief is having, and he and fifty Spartans are fighting the Covenant on Planet Reach, which is like the nine eleven of this universe. Right, I've I've it's, I'm familiar with that. Yeah. And then he eventually he wakes up on the Pillar of Autumn, and it, that's where the script opens in the same way the video game does. That's so nostalgic to me. You open on that ship, then you crash on that fucking big grassy planet. You got the yeah. fucking pistol. Oh, so many! I played that so many times as a kid with my friends, and then I we mean, would, we, would, we would always end up killing our, our soldiers that were following us. <laughs> uh, and, what? And, and, yeah, well, because if you killed them, they would turn on you. And they would become enemies because, like, if you just kept shooting them, because then they would. Because Halo was one of those games where you could kill your, you could have friendly fire, you could kill your compatriots, and if you did it enough, they would fire back. Like you could <laughs> kill, you could kill one or two. Maybe this was just, I don't know. Maybe this was just the version I played, but this is this is what I remember. Uh, you could kill one or two, and it would be fine. But if you killed like enough, they would start firing at you. It would be pretty cool. Anyway. Yeah, I remember. Um, I remember doing that at one point on the first Halo. Yeah, that, well, that's what I, I don't know if you could do it in two or three, but I, I know you could do it in one. Um, you see, that's the thing with me. I, I try, I try my hardest to keep the Marines alive, <laughs> and I would end up failing anyway. You goody two shoes. See, it wasn't my game, so I wasn't, I wasn't trying to progress. I was trying to fuck around. Like, are, are you, are you familiar with the game Infamous? Yeah, I, I that that game I owned and played many times. I love Infamous. 
You see, I chose to be the good guy my first time playing it. Oh, I of... chose to be the good guy <laughs> several times while playing it because I'm a goody two shoes, or I was anyway when I played that game. <laughs> see, then when I started playing like Mad Max, which also has the morality thing, I started like being like bad and shit. Oh yeah, because you're Mad Max, you you want to be that character. <laughs> he's not an asshole though. I mean, he he's he's always kind of he 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 sort of like gruffly like portrays that very like very like he, he, like that basic aesthetic but he doesn't carry through it usually huh anyway uh so back to halo uh so it opens pretty much the same as the game except there's no there's no dream at the beginning of the of the game oh no there isn't and there's no mention of reach until three right no 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 halo two Oh, okay. Halo, yeah, Halo 2 Halo, is the one I'm the least familiar with. I've played through most of 3. Oh, Halo 2 is the one that I'm most familiar with. <laughs> because, um, as a kid, I mainly skipped this, the cutscenes for the first Halo. But with Halo 2, I would stay for the cutscenes because those were the most interesting parts of the game. Because, In my opinion, Halo 2 is still the best installments in the entire franchise i was gonna ask you because i i've heard that and I, but i've again halo 2 is the one i'm the least familiar with so i don't know um yeah because um it's on that one that they start building up the universe of halo because in the first halo um they really give no implication on the mythology or the lore of that universe it's just oh um there's these um aliens that the humans are fighting and suddenly you know they wake up these um zombies called the flood that's basically it for the first Halo. As much as I love it, it doesn't have much in terms of story. It's Halo... a lot more bare bones. Yeah, Halo 2, on the other hand, is completely story-driven. Right. Well, I guess and... that's just because of the advancements in, 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 in narrative technology and everything and relating that to video games and shit. Oh, yeah. Well, kind of. I mean... I mean, they're both you know, they're they're both basically built on the same idea, you know, just gun and run games. Right, but Halo Two makes it actually feel like you're doing it for a reason. Oh yeah, it it does give you that because you you play as the Master Chief and you also play as an elite called the Arbiter. Oh, that's in two. Yeah, that's where it started. Oh, I thought I thought that didn't start until three. Actually, you don't even play as the elite in three, which I kind of miss. Oh, he's just your buddy. Yeah, I think he was just there so um for co-op reasons. Yeah, well well yeah, well you can play as him. Yeah, you can play as him, but he you don't default to him in the campaign. It's no, you're always no. the chief. No. That's why I kind of liked um Halo 5 because you get to switch between the Master Chief and Spartan Locke who's played by Luke Cage. Ooh, that's awesome. That well, Halo I... TV show, did that last at all? Nightfall? Yeah. I think that was like a, a short film. I don't think it was a TV show. I, I haven't seen it because uh, some of my friends who are also Halo fans, they told me to stay away from it. It's terrible, and I believe them because I didn't that, have any That's interest. got Luke Cage in it too. Yeah, the, the, the same actor who also did the motion capture performance in Halo 5 for Spartan Lock. Right. Well, he's, is he supposed to be the same character? Yeah. Right. I think Nightfall is supposed to be his origin story. Gotcha. I think. I, well, they probably did it as a tie-in. I imagine. Of course, they did it as a fucking tie-in. Right. They're trying to promote Halo Five. Right. Um. So I guess back to this script then. So. Yeah. We, so does it make you? Ca does it? Does it in any? So we were talking about how the first Halo, it sort of struggles to to have a, a story that really motivates the gameplay. You're mostly just running and gunning because wow, this is fun. So does the does the script give the story any more oomph than the game does? I mean, compared to the game, yeah. But as a standalone thing, it's still kind of an issue. Like I said, I love the first Halo because I have so much nostalgia for it. But it lacks, you know, a story and characters. <laughs> and the script kind of has a little bit more because, um, okay, well, the script is automatically an adaptation of Halo. But the script specifically is taking elements from the novelization of the first Halo game. Uh, Which Halo is probably a good idea. Yeah. I, I, I've read, like, the first half of Halo The Flood, and I can officially say that 
who uh, Alex Garland read that book and just you know took elements from that book and put it into his script because there are characters from that book that are not in the game mm. that are elements from that book that are in the script but are not in the game. Mm. Like what? Like, like uh, there's this character that comes off sound, sounding like Samuel L. Jackson called Major Silva. Okay. And was, as he, I was, was he in any of the other games? No, he, he's a completely new Just character. That's strictly been, booked book character. Yeah, he, he's he's only in the book, but um, I, yeah, I guess he's also in the script too. And it's funny how Alex Garland wrote him because it. While I was reading this today, I was thinking Samuel L. Jackson would be perfect for this role because he's basically playing Packard from Kong Skull Island in the script. That, uh, that that's how the character sounds like. David, by the way, I'm echoing on your. Uh, do, you, do you have your headphones in? Hold on. Okay. Say future, something nice. Future Bill may or may not cut this out. <laughs> Are you still echoing? Uh no, I don't hear anything now, so we should be fine. Anyway, so so back to your point. So, so this takes characters from the book, and uh, and and puts it into the movie. Where whereas it, those that that didn't exist in the game. Again, that's probably a good idea, but based on the way you're describing this, it doesn't sound like it was enough. To... Yeah, it was. It wasn't enough. To, mm. the, it's way more interesting than the script because. It's a book. You can, you know, yeah. explore so many things with a book that you couldn't do with a script. That's that's natural. And, yeah. And um So the yeah, book like, is called uh, Halo the Flood. Yeah. And I mean it's just it, it it's just a novelization of the the first game. Right, but it's not called Halo Combat Evolve. Like that would be, it'd be no. weird to call a book Halo Combat <laughs> Evolve because it's like well the combat of the book is evolved, the combat of storytelling <laughs> has been evolved. It's like yes. No, no it's just called Halo the Flood. Cuz in a way the flood are the main focus of the game. So the flood, they are a part of the re- they're they're like a they're an element of the religious dogma that the covenant worships that they bring back and it causes a whole bunch of problems right right yeah and the halos they're weapons right yeah they they were weapons created at first to wipe out the flood which they kind of sort of did and they were Cause... created by the covenant no they I think they were products of the forerunners the 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 pe- the aliens that the covenant worship. Okay, right, right, right. right. Okay, I so the for- the forerunners they're in four, aren't they? Yeah. The, uh. Well. Um. I mean, not the entire species, but someone from the forerunner race is there as oh. the main villain called the Didact. Okay, gotcha. So I know this. What do they, I, what I do start... they look like? Big raptors? No, that's or that's the covenant. No, that yeah, that's the covenant. Well, that's. They well, all depend- kind of look like big raptors, don't they? <laughs> yeah, but the the forerunners kind of have like this uh, dog like face. Well, at least that's how the villain in Halo Four looks like. The uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna look this up. You you uh you continue on. So I'm I'm, I'm just looking up uh so for so what's what's the guy's name again? Uh, the didact D I D A C T. And it's kind of weird because I uh, a few days ago I started playing Halo Four. Well, recently I've been um, in a Halo mood lately because I started listening to the Halo Two soundtrack for the first time in its in- entirety. In the past, I, I usually just switch bet- between the tracks that I like and just leave the tracks that I don't like alone. But uh, listening to that, basically the soundtrack to my childhood just got me in a Halo mood and influenced me to finally finish the campaign for Halo. Because I had Halo 5 since November 2015, and I have not finished the campaign up until last week. Wow. I I have that with certain games. I never finished Modern Warfare 3. I never finished Uncharted 3. Uh, Recently, I haven't finished... I I started replaying Bioshock 2. I didn't finish that. I I do that all the time. I I still need to finish Bioshock 2 as well, because I bought that... um, collection thing yeah i have that too and i only finished bioshock one so i still need to get on bioshock two i have a shit ton of games that i bought played bioshock two though before haven't you played the first one oh Oh, okay i see i beat bioshock two when it came out um i I, and it's not great (laughs) it's fine (laughs) it's 
It's like I, I did a Facebook post about it a while ago. I was like, it's the Ghostbusters two of Bioshock. <laughs> it's ex- which is exactly what it is. Um, so anyway, see, uh, I heard the last Bioshock was like the Ghostbusters two of Bioshock. Bioshock Infinite. Yeah, well, I mean, I haven't I haven't played it yet, but I heard not very good things about it. I have heard nothing but good things about it. Really? Yes. Or I'm probably th- I'm probably thinking of a different game because. I know it was a new release, and it was getting some flack. Well, Bioshock Infinite came out a couple of years ago, and it did get flack. I'm not saying it didn't get flack. Um, but no, for nobody who played it that I know personally, everybody who I know personally who played it, loved it. I did Man. hear some people going, it's nothing like Bioshock, and it's fucking pretentious as shit. That's what I heard. <laughs> Which, Bioshock 1, if anything, it's not pretentious. It's 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 certainly very it, it's certainly very involved, but it's not pretentious. Bioshock Two, a little pretentious, <laughs> because it's not as involved. It's it's a it's a far more bare bones story that pretends that it's a lot more deep than it really is. Interesting, because that's what I feel like about Halo Three. Interesting. I never finished Halo 3. I was at my friend's house and like he was playing through Infamous, which I had beaten already. And I, I was like and I was like, "Well, what am I supposed to do?" And he's like, "Well, I've got another TV there and an Xbox hooked up to it, so play Halo 3." And I'm like, "All right." So I started playing through Halo 3 from the beginning. I got to like I got like halfway through it. <laughs> so uh, this guy just invited you to hang around, and they told you, I go play something else. <laughs> yeah, that was pretty much my, my, my relationship with my friends. It was pretty much, I played other video games while they, they talked or, or hung out. I was. I, I, had, I had a similar situation with one of my friends where he invited me over. I thought we were going to play video games. Um, turned out he was watching anime on his computer. And he moved his couch so it can face the computer. So I kind of had no choice but to sit there with him to watch the anime and... That's all we did. Even though I didn't so want to watch. So you played the video game and he played anime uh, and he watched anime. No, because it was in the same. It was in the same room. It was in the living room. Oh, so this, this guy TV. just forced you to watch anime. Yeah, basically, yeah. And oh. I didn't even want to watch the anime, oh, so I, I didn't want to say it. I didn't want to say anything because I didn't want to be rude. But you know, we ended up watching like four episodes total of Devil May Cry, and this was before I got into anime. The Devil May Cry anime. Yeah, I didn't. Know oh Devil- yeah. yeah. It was like a 12 episode anime, which to be honest is not very good. I never saw it. I never knew it was a thing. Oh, don't don't even bother cuz it it sucks basically. It, it, I've never it, played the games either. I have no stake in that franchise, but I know things about it. So that's in, I I just didn't know that they had adapted it in, into into any other medium outside of video games. Um, well, I'm also a big fan of Devil May Cry, so talking about the anime is kind of cuz <laughs> the, the 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 video games are great and there's potential for it in anime and they actually tried to turn it into a live action movie as a matter of fact i still have the script for that too oh so we'll probably Uh, tackle that one down the road probably i don't know if they're doing it or not because i heard that screen gems the same fucking studio that produces those fucking awful resident evil movies oh yeah might be producing it which i'm scared now because like i said i i hate the fucking live action resident evil movies because they suck and I feel like they might do the same thing with a live-action Devil May Cry movie. Well, it, it seems like they might go that way. Because, I mean, they, the Resident Evil movies really have nothing to do with the games. Exactly, which is kind of like, why the fuck are you even making these movies? Then? <laughs> well, they have the names, and they sort of loosely have the same idea. It's just that the stories are nothing like the stories of the games. And it's interesting, the games never made any attempt to look like the movies. Because the games are essentially, like, anime-based, aren't they? They always, Well, I mean, I guess they always were. I never played the first Resident Evil. Or did I? No, I think I played a brief... I think I played a little bit of it. I've played Resident... So I guess I played a little bit of 1, and I've played 4, and I've played 5. And I think that's it. It's funny that you say that, because um, I bought the first Resident Evil game for the PlayStation 1. Because um, my PS3 can play PS1 games. I regret it because I didn't know that the gameplay was, you know, restricted. Because uh, the, the, the the whole reason why I bought it is because, you know, there was so much critical acclaim for it. The, you know, it was on the, the list of greatest video games of all time. So I was like, I'm just going to give this a try. But it's and old since, uh, and, and, and outdated. 
Yeah, very, very much so. And I, I played I re- it for about ten minutes, and I was like, I can't. I, I don't know what this is. I'm I'm gonna I, go. I'm gonna go play Resident Evil Five now. <laughs> yeah, I tried to give it a chance until I got to the plant boss, and I just gave up because. Oh, I didn't get to any boss on. I was just I, like, I, I, like ten minutes in, and I was like, "Fuck this." Worst thirty bucks I ever spent. I don't know. I think I spent like five bucks on PSN. Oh, you lucky bastard! And I think I got it refunded because I returned it because I was like, "This is dick." Well, you can refund shit on PSN. I'm pretty sure you can. Yeah, you can do oh. it on most digital purchase platforms, like Audible. Fucking. Turn shit all the time, son. <laughs> um, I'm gonna explore this more further tonight. <laughs> uh, I'm pretty sure. But uh, back to Halo. Yeah, let's let's go back to Halo. So what's what else is different? Well, um, I don't remember if this was in the book, but this is in the script. And the Master Chief has this kind of like rivalry with uh, Major Silva, who's the leader of the um, the Hell Jumpers or the ODST, as they call them in the game. Oh wow, this is so fucking Kong Skull Island. <laughs> and um, I'm into it. I, I... <laughs> and um, the reason why he, I guess he hates the Master Chief is um, because he blames Master Chief for Reach because the Spartans failed and you know Reach was glassed by the Covenant, and even Cortana tells the Master Chief. He can't possibly blame you for that. And the Master Chief says, um, why not? I do. Yeah. yeah. This Master Chief's a real sad dude. <laughs> <laughs> so let's, can we, can we talk about him for a second? We can go back to the differences, you know, obviously just one sec. I want to talk about Master Chief as a character. So we can talk about how they approach him in the movie, obviously. And it seems like that he's pretty close, except for the blood transfusion thing. Um, like, he's... Captain America in space is pro- is easily the best way to describe him, except he's got way less personality, no? Right, and that's the funny thing. He kind of has a little bit more personality in the script than he does in the video games. I figured they'd have to do that, because in the video games, he's sort of intentionally a block of wood. Right, and um, he has moments here and there where... Um... Yeah, I know. He's, he's, he's not a non-character. He just doesn't talk much. Right. Because uh, that's the thing about um, adapting video games. There are some video games that are filmable, like Doom or Halo. And then there are some video games that are just not filmable, like Super Mario. Even though, well, they filmed Super Mario and Doom, both unsuccessfully. Yeah. <laughs> Although well, I've never seen the Doom movie in full, and what I've seen of it, I'm like, I like The Rock. <laughs> Who turns out to be the act? Because I mean, he turns out to be a bad guy, though. Who, who turns out to be like the actual good guy in that? Uh, Carl Urban, the guy oh, who played. Oh, all right. So I, I do have to go back to that then. I like him. Yeah, the guy who coincidentally played um Judge Dredd in Alex Garland's version of uh Judge Dredd. <laughs> so back, to, so 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 back, so again, back to, back to Halo. So here, so again, what's your perception of the Master Chief character, though? Like in general, or in the script? Start in general, then we can go back into the script. So I think uh, the Master Chief is kind of like that, um, like the Rambo of video games, you might say, because that's what he basically Rambo's is. Rambo's a character, though. <laughs> yeah. So, so, so I, I guess, I guess it's but Rambo's very monosyllabic as well, except when he's ranting at his at his old colonel. He's they call me baby killer. <laughs> uh, you know, then, then then he's less monosyllabic. Um, but I guess that that is a, that is a good comparison, and 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 that doesn't make Rambo not a character. I, I guess is also a good point. Well, the thing about a Rambo is that he's suffering from post-traumatic stress disorder, while Master Chief isn't. Because I've, I've read the book um, The Fall of Breach, and it's basically an origin story for the Master Chief and the Spartans. And um, basically, uh, the, all the Spartans were kidnapped so they can, um, they were, so they can be trained to fight a rebellion. They, they weren't created at first to fight the Covenant. That was just a a last minute thing that the the UNSC had to do. Oh, I see. They, what were they created to do? They were created to stop the insurgent forces, right? Right. And um oh, to be honest, now, I... the weird thing about Halo is that they have like two different they have, they have like a Star Wars thing going on and then they have like an Independence Day thing going on where it's simultaneously intergalactic not, not intergalactic but uh interplanetary civil war 
as well as also a war with an entire alien race that's more advanced than we are. Right. Well, the Covenant appeared after the Civil War, I believe. Well, don't they appear during it? Because that's what that movie's about. Halo 3 Forward Onto Dawn. Even, which is weird. That, t- that title is a lie. Or, or is it Halo 4 Forward Onto Dawn? I don't know. Um, yeah, Halo 4 Forward Onto uh, Dawn. Oh, okay. Which, it's weird, though, because... Well, I, I guess it's the origin for a character in Halo 4. But it takes place before Halo 1. Um, and, and it's like, it, it takes place during the Civil War. It's before they even know what it's like. They go, they, like, you know, it's about, the, it's the day the Covenant attack, basically. Um, oh. it's the day the Covenant reveal themselves. And, 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 and everybody freaks and everything. But more than that, it's also the day the Spartans reveal themselves. And it's the first, Master Chief is in it towards the end. And, uh, they, they, uh, like, it's a bunch of, like, you know, normal, What's the name of the military force again? UNSEC? Yeah, UNSC. UNSC. Um, uh, for, like, military forces, like, being saved by the Spartans. And at one point, it's, it's, it's kind of annoying, but also a little clever. Two of the Spartans take their helmets off so you can see what they look like under the helmet, and they're, they're just kind of big, like, Aryan-looking motherfuckers. Uh, <laughs> and then Master Chief doesn't. And they all sort of look at him like he's weird. And it's like, well, all right, that's a little much, no? That's a weird thing, because he does take his helmet off in the script, but it's during a dream sequence, so... Do you see his face? Yeah, you see his face, and he's bald. I always Basically. I always figured that. Yeah, but um, there's this scene later on at the end where um, Master Chief uh, talks with the grave, the, the, I guess the leader of the Flood. And so the flood don't like the covenant, right? <laughs> well, they have no pro they, or they just don't even care. They're just like, we're just going to kill everything. They're parasites. You know, they just infect everything. So they're just like, they're brainless killers. Right. Well, they're controlled by a single, um, a single creature, you know, the grave mind. And, um, it's funny cause, um, the, okay. The grave mind doesn't appear in the script the way he appears in Halo 2. As this big giant plant like monster. Instead, he's not in Halo One though. The game. No, he's not. But um, he, they introduce him in Halo Two as the the thing that controls the the flood. Mm-hmm. And no, uh, I, I get that. But so, so they introduce him in in the in the movie though in the in, in the first script. They're just like, right. we got to introduce this fucker now. <laughs> right. Um. But he 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 um takes possession of um Captain Keys. And he talks. He talks. I he talks. fucking remember Captain Keys, man. I, I remember that fucking name from my childhood. Yeah. He, oh, he's very much in the script. Well, he has to be because he he was very much essential in the video game. Yeah. Well, he's one of the military dudes yelling at you the whole time, like Chief. Why yeah. need you to do this, Chief? <laughs> <laughs> Chief. <laughs> I just love the fact that your uh, uh, voice for a uh, military guy is sounds like Jerry Lee Lewis almost. <laughs> Chief, you got it. Chief, with the lady, you gotta stop <laughs> and stop the covenant and <laughs> in the badness. But anyway, yeah, great. Great mind possesses uh, Master Chief, uh, not Captain Keys, and talks to the chief through the fucking dead captain. So the grave mind can't talk. It's is it the grave mind or the great mind? Grave, grave, like like, like, like buried in a grave. Gotcha. Um. So, so, so the brave mind, the, the, the grave mind can't talk on its own. It has to talk through somebody. In the video games, it can talk on its own, but as a big monster, but they don't show the big monster in the game. Uh, I, I think this was probably to budgetary reasons. Right. So you don't see any physical manifestation of it outside of the dead captain. No, you don't. Interesting. And it's just in this dream sequence. Oh no, it's, um, oh, it's not a dream sequence. No, uh, seeing the Master Chief's face is in the dream sequence. Okay, but e- even um in that in that same scene where um Cortana and the Master Chief are talking with uh, Grave Mind, we we start to see um small pieces of um the Chief's face, not his whole face, but just like you know an ear, a nose, or his forehead, and it's not the same as it is in the dream because in the dream his face is described as you know being bald completely pale and clean his real face however is completely like scorched and scarred from war 
Oh, so he's all fucked up in the helmet. Right. Interesting. That's 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 way better than anything anybody else has ever put forward. I'm sure that's been like I'm sure that's been talked to death by Halo fans like, "Oh, he's probably really fucked up under there. That's why he doesn't take the helmet off." That makes a lot of sense. I li- but I've never heard that before. That that's probably the best explanation I've heard. But I don't think he is fucked up under the helmet because um at the end of Halo 4, if you play it on legendary, um there's a secret ending where Oh, you see his eyes. I've seen that. Yeah, you see his eyes yeah. and yeah. there there's scars. There's no, no like he looks pretty. Yeah. He looks pretty good for a man his age. Yeah, which I, I mean I don't know if they ever confirmed that, but he's probably he's probably fifty fifty three or so. <laughs> Where, where'd you get that number? I guessed it out of nowhere. How old is he probably? Do you imagine in, in that I, game? I have no idea because in the books they do give out the the years of you know where where the story is set and. How far the, in the future is Halo? I, I, that I never knew. I have no idea. Really, really far. If, <laughs> what um, a fan you are. <laughs> really, really far if they're, if they're able to like jump into hyperspace. I mean, I would have to agree, but who knows? Star Wars is set in the fucking past, son. They fucking <laughs> jump into hyperspace all the time. Uh, so who knows? But uh, but I, I believe you because it's 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 not like Star Wars. It's set on Earth and, and well, it, it comes like, Earth is part of it and it's just it's basic humanity evolution and all that shit. Uh so let's go back to the script then in terms of the Chief's characterization. How is that different? What's your perception of the movie Chief? I kind of like him better in the script because he actually has um a a little bit of um a character to him because uh in this in the script they made him be friends with Foe Hammer, the, the the lady pilot from the first game that you never see, but you always hear her. Mm. Apparently, in this version, they go way back. At least that's what the chief says. Uh, when Cortana asks, who's Foe Hammer? He's like, a good soldier. We go way back. <laughs> and there's this little moment where um, the chief and Foe Hammer kind of like have this like uh, little friendly talk. But Do they under fall? the... No. <laughs> under, <laughs> Under the restrictions of the Chief's type of dialogue, like, um... Hold on, let me bring up that page, as a matter of fact, if I can find it, because... We can, do, mean... an, we can do a live reading. <laughs> Hopefully Alex uh, Garland doesn't listen to this and get mad. Oh, I would he get mad? They're mocking my art! No, <laughs> that, that's probably not how Alex Garland talks, or how he would react to this. He probably, he's probably a very nice man, he probably takes everything in very good humor and good spirits. Um, well, he's British, so you would have to do a British accent. Oh, they're mocking my art! <laughs> there you go. I, that was really that was a little much. Um, but anyway, well, uh, never mind. Never mind the, the the page. But yeah, he has a little bit of, more of um of a character. So he, you know, he talks with Cortana, and Does he they're, joke they're, around. I mean, like unintentionally. Like there's a bit That's of humor. Nice. Okay, so, so they they don't make him out of character with the games. There's just there's just sort of more to him. Yeah, like That's they're just, great. That's awesome. Th- there's this scene where um Cortana's talking and it, the Master Chief interrupts her and says, "Cortana, can I ask you a question?" And she says, "Anything. How do I turn you off?" <laughs> and next scene. I remember a line from like like that from the games. Although usually in the game, in the parts I remember, he's he's kind of like gay for her. Like he's a little bit. It's it's kind of gay. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> like you know, he he's he likes he likes what she's about. Oh, here's another thing. Um, uh, they established that um, Chief is the only one that can hear Cortana inside his helmet. Well, that makes sense. So when when he talks to Cortana, it seems like he's talking to himself. Right. So I, I figured. Talk, I always so, figured that. So he's talking with a soldier about something. Cortana butts in, and then he starts talking to her, and then the soldier gets confused. <laughs> and <laughs> and I he, love that. And, and, and um, the, the soldier asks him, "Sir, who are you talking to?" And and that's where Cortana says, "Shut the <laughs> fuck up, you piece of <laughs> shit." <laughs> he says something. Si- well, not really. Hold hold on. Um, he he says Cortana tells him he can't hear me. Master Chief is like, oh, and then he turns to the soldier and says, no one. And Cortana says, I'm no one? And then the Master Chief kind of backtracks says, no, I didn't mean you. And then 
the soldier thinks he's talking to him, and then Master Chief just kind of gives up and says, forget it, and walks away. <laughs> that's, I think that's genuinely funny. I think that that's great. Yeah, it, it, like humor like that, they... they that, that totally it, works, yeah. Yeah, they added that into the Master Chief in this. That's why I feel like he has a little bit more to his character than in the games. He tries to communicate with people. He's not a block of wood. He's not a fucking... It, he's not just like a total, like... um. Uh, what's the word like a wall like he's not like he doesn't seem like he has Asperger's like he's the you know he, he, <laughs> he talks to people you know like I don't know I, 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 that was that was maybe a little bit that, 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 I'm sorry I, I, that joke was maybe a little much I apologize uh, <laughs> but but uh but I I, I only I, I didn't even mean it as a joke I meant I meant it in terms of you know he just uh he doesn't he maybe ne- he maybe necessarily doesn't uh doesn't communicate with people on the level that uh, that most people do uh so. Right. Uh, not to well, back. Not to backtrack myself. Uh. <laughs> well, he he even confronts uh, Major Silva on asking him what what's his problem with him, and that's where Silva tells him that you know it's his fault that Reach was destroyed. So yeah, there's a, there's a little bit of a character. Cortana butts in like no 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 it wasn't, and 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 Chief is like yeah she's right just to just to add to the confusion. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um. Um, so interesting. He's he's kind of he, there's more to him. He's he's kind of better. Yeah. More more well well rounded, I guess you'd say. Right. But here's the thing: what I think they should have done with the script. This is what I would do if I was adapting Halo. If I'm going to be um, adapting the first game, I want to add elements from the book The Fall of Reach to show the origins of the Master Chief. What I would approach it as: Highlander meets Halo, where you learn oh, about. Oh, that's kind of badass. Yeah, where, where, where you meet, where you see the origins of uh, the Master Chief and the Spartan program through flashbacks, because the problem with this script is that it's too fateful. It almost seemed like Alex Garland was just writing about his experience playing the game. Huh. I wonder if he tried to do that intentionally. He probably did. Probably. I mean, th- th- there's moments where the script, you know, pay it, it honors the video game, like. There's a scene where Master Chief um, sneaks up to an elite and hits him with the in the back with his gun. Um, well, here's my question: How faithful is it in terms of like what actually goes on? Because the game is busy work; like it's you running around, fucking turning levers and shit. So, like, I mean, ha- like, is is that the movie? Like, it's two hours of Master Chief running around turning levers. Yes, but not turning levers. It's just kind of like two hours of him just um running around and um. Uh, shooting sh- shooting the covenant but it, it, it no problem with that <laughs> it, it stops here and there to like you know establish you know um t- to spend time with other characters like besides master chief like captain keys uh the the hell jumpers or uh, there it's there's this recurring thing where um we keep going back to master chief's dream it the, dr- the drill is the same it's him being alone at reach He's on top of a pile of dead bodies, Spartans and Covenant, and um, yeah, that, that's basically it. He even talks to Cortana, to Cortana in one of those dream sequences because since she's in his head, she can look at what he's dreaming about. Oh wow, is that in the games? No, I don't think so. It might be in the books. Someone correct me if I'm wrong, but I know for a fact that's not in the games. Mm. But but then again, a lot of tie-in material tend to retcon a lot of shit. Yeah, like, well, totally. Awakening. <laughs> Godzilla Awakening is a, is the big example. Have you read um Kong, uh, uh, Skull Island: The Birth of Kong yet? Is that out yet? Yeah, uh, I've read one. It's f- kind of great. Because C- Amazon's saying that it's not going to be released until September twelfth. Uh, n- that must be the trade paperback. Then I'm talking about issue one. Oh. You know, it's it's a whole series. It's it's great. You should read it. Um, I actually kind of like it better than the the Joe DeVito Kong Skull Island book that's going on right now. <laughs> um, I I think I genuinely do. I, I don't know, man. I like this. I like the monster verse, and I like this version of Skull Island. So I'm into it. Anyway, Halo. Uh, action sequences. How are those? Oh, there's there's a lot in this. As a matter of fact, the first ten minutes is it opens on an action scene. It opens on a um, Master Chief and the the other parts fighting on Reach. That I think this was a, intended to be an R-rated movie because in that same, I um, think you would have to to really do it right. 
I mean, maybe not. It's not an excessively gory game. It's not like Gears of War. Gears of War has got to be R-rated. But Halo, I think you can sort of pussy by with a PG-13. But I, yeah, you, you want to do like an alien type of movie where it, it's it's R-rated sci-fi in space, where it's like we see like people get dismembered and shit. Right. Actually, I, I think you could succeed with a PG-13 um, Halo movie. I think you could get away with it, yeah. There's really not much um, blood and gore in the games anyways, aside from, you know, see, seeing blue blood splattered on walls and shit and yeah. cutting down blood. But there, there, in that sequence, in that uh, opening dream sequence, um, there, there's this one description of a, a Spartan who has half of his armor blown off, and he's just walking around completely dazed, and half of his arm is dangling from its sockets. It's 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 a gruesome imagery, but it's kind of like you know, it kind of sets the tone for for this script. Right, that that sounds awesome to me, man. Because we need like a really hardcore war movie in space. We don't have that. Halo or Gears of War could be either one of those. I think Gears of War would be perfect for that because the closest all... thing we have is Rogue One, but it's not brutal in the same way that I'm talking about. It, right. It's more implied brutality because it's still a Disney Star Wars movie. <laughs> right. Well, I, I, if they are making that Gears of War movie, um, I think that would be the perfect time to make an to make it. R-rated version of that because yeah, I'm hoping they, that's not trash because that that has every possibility to be trash, right? Um, but like I said, Deadpool and Logan kind of like opened the doors for a lot of a lot of these um geek culture movies to be R-rated. Yeah, no, I, I think there's if they do it, it'll be R-rated. I'm just saying, I'm just wondering if it'll be any good because the best Gears game is two, so story wise as well. So I think you do two. I don't think you start with one when it comes to that's Gears. Weird. That's weird because the, the Gears of War script that I have. Yeah, we'll, we'll talk about it at some point. Yeah, um, it, it's actually an origin story that begins before the first game. Oh, there's a book that does that. So I guess it's ba- that, that's another one that's like based on a book. Huh. So half of these screenwriters don't even play the games. They just probably read the books. Well, I mean, it sounds like Alex Garland played Combat Evolve. I mean, if he was super faithful to it. Or maybe oh, yeah. he was just being faithful to the book. I mean, because I imagine the book is pretty faithful to the game. In terms of, like, you know, scenario-wise, but the script is very detailed on how, you know, the Master Chief fights and how, um... Uh, and and I'll, I'll, it just... It takes a lot of beats from, like, you know, the actions you do in the video game, like, you know, hitting the the back of an elite with your gun and it he instantly dies... Or the fact that after you kill a grunt, it shoot it involuntarily shoots around before dying. You know, sm- small little details like that from the game. That's are an awesome joke. I remember that the the grunt shooting. Right. It, it, it's funny how um, very descriptive of the Covenant the script is because um, they desc- Alex Garland describes the grunts as being the size of gorillas. Huh. Which I did not know until reading the script, because um, the Master Chief is seven feet tall. Which, if if well, if he's being accurate to true gorillas in reality, that might actually be accurate. Because gorillas are not, they're big, but they're not seven feet tall. Right. Because uh, as the Master Chief, the grunts are significant, significantly smaller compared to the Chief when you approach a grunt. In the game, they're definitely not gorilla sized. Right. Well, I, I think that's because you're playing as the Master Chief, and he's already seven feet tall. Yeah, but I, the, the, the things in the games, like the, yeah, but they rock up to normal people at points, and they're not the gorilla sized. I mean, they're, they're, they're as thick as gorillas, e- even when they go up to people. <laughs> Do you think that they're as tall though? Probably not, not as tall, but they they probably are as thick as gorillas. I'm not disputing that. I'd ha- I'd agree with you there. As if like, there's like scientific data we can produce to prove <laughs> this. Um, uh, but uh, what else did you want to point to, man? Because I'm 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 certainly interested. I'm invested. I mean, I, I'm not a, I'm not a big Halo fan, but I've always wanted to see this movie. So I want I want I want to know what they did. How does it How does it 
does it in any way directly set up outside of the um the grave the grave master what was his name the grave the, the grave mind the grave mind outside him what do they set up stuff for the other games at all no not really it's actually a pretty um a a, pr- a pretty um standalone film like um it's not it, it doesn't set up in schools or anything like that actually um it kind of does like um three four three guilty spark um the the little monitor in the first um halo uh, uh the movie ends with this post credit scene where um the monitor guilty spark it comes to the screen it looks at the audience and says oh hello and fades to black so it kind of does set up something for Halo 2, but I think that's because that's also in the video game. Oh. Yeah, but it takes... So what is that set up for... Is that character in 2 and not in 1? In oh, he, he's, he's in Halo 1, and um, I, he survives because he, he does come back in um, Halo 2 and Halo 3. Okay, so that's that's kind of lame setup. You, like you want something more. Like you want like, like the, what's the plot of Halo Two? Because one is, oh my god, they're gonna wake up the flood on this dumb planet. We gotta stop them. What's two? Halo. It, it, it has a similar similar plot, but it, the but it opens with the the elite who eventually becomes the arbiter. He he kind of he kind of gets um. A, not in prison. I'm trying to find the right word, but he comes before this um, trial hearing for failing to um, protect the first Halo, and um, th- they strip him of his rank, and I guess they they put him in jail. But after they couldn't invade the Earth, w- which what the UNSC were trying to keep from the Covenant because that's the last human city apparently, or the last human planet. Um, well, sure. I mean, you don't want them on in our neck of the woods, because every other planet is like, well, we didn't start there. Fight. Right. Well, anyways, um, well, I, I guess they fail, because eventually you leave the Earth and find an, another Halo in Halo 2. Uh, the, the Covenant get the same elites that they um, persecuted and give him the highest rank of the elites, the, the Arbiter. He has a name, too. I just, for, I just never bothered to learn it, because it's mm. such a long alien name so i always just refer to him as the arbiter so they did they did they like send him after the chief for revenge not at first they 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 um they they send them to to quote unquote silence a, a heretic who who used to be with the covenant but he found out you know halo's true purpose and he managed to um to 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 not launch a coup with the with the covenant, but he managed to convert a lot of the um, a lot of the aliens from the covenant to join his side. So they defected. Yeah, they they basically defected, and they send the arbiter to basically kill him so he can stop telling other other aliens these lies. Because the prophets, th- those are the guys who are in charge of the the covenant. That. They're they're trying to do this thing called the Great Journey, and the Great Journey basically is activating the rings and destroying everything in life, so they can be join, so they can join the Forerunners, their gods. They like if they if they unleash the energy from the the rings to destroy the universe, it would be a holy cleansing. Oh, it's like it's like a second Big Bang, right? Okay. In and, their eyes, they're like, "We're gonna restart the into. We're gonna get better again by restarting from the beginning." Things were right. not great in the beginning. Have you ever seen like the Land Before Time? Like that's things were shit back then. Oh god, it was the most fucking depressing movie I ever seen as a kid. Do you want more Land Before Time sequels? Halo Aliens? I didn't think so. <laughs> Don't do this. That's how we get Land Before Time sixty five. Littlefoot murders I, I was, his I, own mother. <laughs> I was always a bigger fan of the of the of the sequels than the first movie. I was more familiar with the sequ. I, I I'm with you. I was more familiar with the sequels than the first movie. I've seen them all more. The one I'm the most familiar with is the one with the baby T Rex. Chomper. Yeah. Wow. I haven't heard that name in like <laughs> fucking twenty years. My God. Just uh, turned into Obi Wan Kenobi. I, I, haven't, I haven't heard that name in a long time. 
<laughs> oh, man. Fact, it was a purple t- it was a purple baby T-Rex and the parents weren't even close to being purple. No, well they were real T-Rex. I mean they weren't real T-Rexes. They were, they were cartoons. <laughs> but uh they, they they looked like what you would imagine a real T-Rex to look like. Um and so, somehow they birthed a baby Barney. Yeah, they exactly. They they exa- right? It's Barney. They put her back a few times as well. Right. Well, David, we're talking about the land before time now, so I think we should. Uh, I think we should close. Uh, we should wrap things up on the script. So, what else did you want to say? I'm kind of sort of glad that this script wasn't made because if this film would have been made, it probably would have been mediocre. I mean, the way it is, um, after Peter Jackson and Neil Blomkamp came on board, they started adding their own stuff. Unfortunately, I don't have that script, and I would love to get my hands on it because I would love to know how Neil Blomkamp and Peter Jackson envisioned their version of Halo. Because Neil Blomkamp did direct the live-action commercials for Halo 3. Yeah, I remember remember those. That was a huge deal. (laughs) Yeah. And those look great. Mm Mm-hmm. And I'm assuming he did those on a low budget because, you know, they were commercials. (laughs) That was also very clear. I I could have just imagined what he could have done with a big-budgeted Halo film. Yeah. But now I think Halo could be done better as a TV series. Yeah, you should watch Forward Onto Dawn because I think that is just – like the fact that they didn't make a big-budget Hollywood Halo movie is ridiculous because of how solid that movie is. And that movie isn't like amazing or anything. It's clearly like a, a tie-in for a game movie, but it's insane how good it is despite that. And part of that is just because of how fascinating and – and interesting the world is. I mean, say you want say what you want about those games. They're run of the mill first person shooters. Well, yeah, but they were the first run of the mill first person shooter of of their kind. Um, but they're fascinating. They're cultural. They're cultural landmarks. They're incredibly unique. You know, they, they define elements of the genre. And again, there's just there's stuff in the world that's cool. I mean, the aliens are. I've never seen religious fanatic aliens done they kind of remind me of like the apes from planet of the apes but they're aliens and that's kind of interesting to me right um well apparently they're they're in 2013 um they announced that a live action tv series uh produced with steven spielberg is happening and well that was the second plan was after jackson left spielberg came on board Right, and apparently it's the, the the project is still in development, so it's not completely canceled. I kind of have hope for that because honestly, I do think that Halo can work as a as a TV series, even better as a Netflix original series. No, man, I really would love to see a movie. I mean, I, I know I get it, I get why a TV show makes more sense, but I just I kind of wish we would have gotten this, dude. I'm I'm gonna be honest with you. I kind of wish they would have shot <laughs> the script. No, you should read the script, and then you'll kind of see why I, I don't think it would work. Well, well it, it, I'll tell you what. I'm, I'm going to read the book. I'm going to read the book Halo the Flood, um, and then uh, maybe I will read the script after that, um, although I probably won't like it then after reading the book. But, uh, well, yeah, yeah, because the script is pretty mediocre as a as a movie, mm-hmm. as a big-budget okay. blockbuster, because it's kind of – like I said, it's, it's very um, – it feels more like an adaptation of someone who played the game instead of adapting like a story or even creating their own story. It's not. It's not telling a story. It's like you ever play Halo? Here's Halo. <laughs> You're right. Oh, the script for God of War was way worse. Really? Oh, we should definitely do that. Oh God. Oh, then I'll, I'll just explain how horrible it is on, on the next episode. Do you, you want to talk about that next time? All right. All right. Cool. So, so I, I, I guess, uh, I guess we're gonna we're gonna next it this week. So, uh, so, <laughs> so next time we will be discussing what year is that? What year did that get written? Uh, I think it was two thousand six. If I if I remember correctly, I, I don't remember. I'll have to bring back that script and at least read the first trace. Around the same time, though, that's when a lot a lot of these big budget game franchises were like that, that got scra- that got scrapped as movies. Like happened because that, that that's that was the pinnacle of like people thought that video games were going to be like, and I mean they were right that they were going to be like, oh, the next big thing, but it stagnated a lot in those ten years. I mean it's still stagnating because um, you, 
Assassin's Creed didn't do very well financially. Yeah, yeah, no, they haven't. They haven't done it yet, man. The closest thing we've seen, um, oh, there was something recently that did well. That was like a Warcraft. video game. No, that didn't do well. Well, it, it um, it did very well in China. Okay, fine, but they don't count. I know. <laughs> nah. Uh, I, I, might, I might be the only one who enjoyed Warcraft, even though I yeah, am not. Yeah, you a... are, because uh, I saw I it twice and I hated it. Oh, you seen it? Yeah, I, I didn't like it at all. We can talk about that for a minute. That was another sure. movie that was stuck in development hell for a long time. Right. Like, that was like ten years. That was since the game launched. I I I, I, would, I had always wanted to see a World of Warcraft movie. One of the earliest videos on my channel is a is a trailer I cut together myself. That's a World of Warcraft trailer for a movie. And that's where the name Zazubar originated from, didn't it? Yes, it does. Uh, excuse me. Uh, yes, it it, it did. <laughs> it it uh, I got so bored with my own backstory. Um. Yeah, no, it originated from from my World of Warcraft character. Uh, I always wanted to see it, and I did not like the movie. Uh, I didn't not. I liked the orc stuff, but the human stuff was unbearable. You don't agree? Uh, yeah. I mean, I had my issues with the movie. Like, first of all, the pacing was an issue. To be honest, I I, mean, I don't disagree with you there. I I was lost the whole time. I could not follow the plot. Right. And um what was the name of that of that guy? The 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 dude who um left uh wizards? Uh which character I'm talking about. Yes, I don't know his name. But it seems Fuck. like they just got a random Warcraft fanboy and just, you know, gave him the part. Medivh? No, not Medivh. Um the, du- the dude that Medivh is uh, jealous of because he thinks he's going to take his job. No idea. The younger kid? Yeah, the younger kid. Yeah, no idea. I have no idea who that was supposed to be. I hated him. Uh, yeah. yeah, that was a weird character because, like I said, I felt like they, they took a random Warcraft fanboy and just gave him the part. Seems that way, right? <laughs> right. He definitely uh, didn't, he age-wise didn't seem like a wizard. No, because he was still young. Yeah. That was bizarre. I didn't like it. The they, CGI was good on the orcs. Oh yeah, the, oh yeah, definitely. Uh, as a matter of fact, I th- I wish we'd have spent more time with the orcs because they were the most yeah. important. They were the most, uh, the best thing about the movie. Oh yeah, they were the only thing I liked about. It. I didn't even like everything, but the bit where, uh, oh fuck, what's his name? Uh, Durotan uh, fought, um, Bulldan. Well, yeah, fought the wizard. Uh, that that was like that was, that was some cool. That was insane. That was one of the best fight scenes I saw in a movie last year. Because that that was that was pretty lo- that was pretty lit. Where like he, the the wizard starts like draining his life as he's fighting him. That was pretty. cool. I also really like that character too, Goldan. Yeah, no, he worked. He totally worked as a villain. Yeah. Um, I, I just think that that movie is unbearable from a human point of view, and we spend most of the time with them. Oh yeah, I agree. I mean, honestly, um, don't know how. Okay, I don't. I don't think it's a like you know, a, the greatest movie I've ever seen. I, I understand it's a bad movie, but it's a bad movie that I find enjoyable. Fair enough. No, fair enough. I, I, dude, you can think whatever you want. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, that, that that is fine with me. Uh, I haven't played Warcraft in like eight years. <laughs> So uh, I, I'm out. Like I, I, I couldn't give a fuck. I have never played Warcraft. Well, wow, that's a, really? Well, that's a lie. Uh, oh, one, okay, fuck. I wow. went to a friend's house and they were playing Warcraft on their computer. All I did was just ri- walk around, and that's basically my entire Warcraft experience I right mean, there. It's, it's an RPG, yeah. I mean, all you do is walk around. I remember at one point I vowed I wasn't going to quest anymore. I was just going to murder stuff and get XP that way. <laughs> And it was the most fun I ever had playing Warcraft. Um, but all right, so there, there you go, David. We 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 talked about one video game script, and we stretched out the podcast by shitting on another video game movie that actually happened. <laughs> the 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 future of this of this genre is bright. I I think. Uh, so I I think that's gonna do it for this edition of Lost Found Never Filmed. Uh, awesome job, David. That that was a that was a wonderful account. Of the 2005 Alex Cohen script for Halo, so uh, go ahead and get your hands on the script if you want to give it a go for yourself. I'm going to go back and read the original book that it's based on and uh, 
and get my thoughts on that. And uh, and maybe maybe we can talk about that a bit at some point when when I finish it. Uh, but yeah. So next week we're going to talk about God of War from whatever the hell year that is. Do you do you remember the writer's name on that or no? Uh, no, not really. Like I said, I have to bring back that script. All right, I'll... all right. Well, we'll get into that next time. Uh, so, we'll again, until then, I'm Bill Worcester, a.k.a. Zazibar. I'm Gorazard. And uh, if you lost it, we'll find it, but you ain't gonna fucking film it. <laughs>